Hello guys, good morning. It's Monday, it's 9 a.m. And today on Mornings with Sue, I have a jam-packed topic. It's going to be 10 tiny tweaks so you can be more, you can appear, you can be more professional in your dog walking business. So I'm going to dive right in because it's going to be a lot of material and I wanna cover this. So use a signature in all your emails. So meaning you can write like warmly sue or best sue like your name obviously but then also don't just do this but get a um get a uh, footer which basically has your company logo in it your company name your uh, contact information your instagram information facebook information wherever you really are and um also what works really well to put a little link in your um, email footer for like your, your latest blog post. So definitely use a signature in all your emails because whenever you see a correspondence from anybody with any big company, they don't just put warmly Sue and then the dog walking company, they actually put a whole kind of footer in it. So make it kind of, you know, you can also make it a little bit colorful so it stands out. It just looks way more professional. It's just like when you write a letter from your company and you use a regular white paper versus one with a header on it which has your logo in it so that's the difference also use a greeting in every single email and i really mean it in every single email whenever a potential client or a client writes you an email make sure you actually write back like hi john you know don't don't just start the whole body of the email i mean there used to be a time when we wrote letters and we are still writing letters, but not really as often. And there, there is a certain structure to it, right? There is, um, there's first the, uh, the greeting and then the body and then, you know, the sincerely or whatever, the, 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 the footer really. So make sure you have that also in your, in your email correspondence. It's really important. Don't just make it like a back and forth, like you do with friends, um, where you literally just have, have the body and no kind of, like hey john or hey lisa so use a greeting in every single email please get a professional email address so a lot of dog sitters dog walkers um in the beginning and i completely get it you really don't don't you just want to walk the dogs and you don't even want to dive in too much into the business but it's actually super easy to get your professional email address so meaning um instead of lisa's dog walking at gmail.com it would be lisa at dogwalkingcompany.com, which actually really shows that you have a business and you don't just use your personal email account to uh, talk to clients. So make sure you set that up. There are ways to do it and it's actually pretty easy. So use a professional greeting when picking up the phone. So I when, when in, in the beginning, I uh, called a bunch of my competitors just to see what they were saying. I just wanted to talk to them. But first of all, a lot didn't even pick up or didn't have any kind of voicemail. I, I really get it that that you can pick up all the time, but at least have a really good voicemail greeting, but I'm gonna go, I'm going to get to it. Um, but when you pick up, don't just say like, hey, or basically nothing. Say, hey, this is Sue with Dog Walk 12. How can I help you? You know, like it's just something, or how can I get your dog's whale to, um, tail wagging, just something, you know, so, you know, you can just like ask a question. So people know that they're going to talk to a human, that they, that they're, that they're welcome to talk to you. So don't just say it, 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 it sounds with so many companies. I mean, even when you call like your, your local taco place, sometimes it's just really discouraging to actually have business with you because you don't even hear what they're saying. There's one that's um, in one of my, my, my towns and they're literally just stating the location where they are so they're in south orange and they just literally pick up they don't even mention their business name they just say south orange okay so i don't even know if i'm i'm talking to that business that i literally just called so make sure you have a really nice um greeting so it could be good morning this is chef with best mouth best, best mutts in town dog walking how can i help you today just something really nice and make sure you do have an upbeat tone of your voice please you want to um, you want to really en envelop the caller on the other line with your warmth, because that's what your business is all about, right? 
get a Google Voice number. So instead of giving out your personal phone number, get a Google Voice number because you can connect this to your phone number. You can get, you can write text through it. You can um, uh, have voicemails, voicemail greetings through it. You can have, you can have, um, you, you can literally have all sorts of things through it, just like with, with your regular phone number. So make sure you have your Google Voice number because it's just much more professional, especially a lot of clients don't really know boundaries. So they call at night, they call early in the morning and you really don't want to be woken up in the morning by your clients. So make sure you get a Google Voice number because then you can also turn it off of your phone and you can literally, literally do anything you want to do that you can do with your regular phone number. So leave a proper voicemail greeting. So with this one, you can literally say, hi, this is Jeffstown's dog walking. We're most likely out walking a dog or playing with a cat. Please leave us a message with your name, phone number, why you're calling, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So with this one, you have literally just left a very professional um, impression of your business. And also once you actually go further, I've talked about this in another video with, um, how to automate your dog walking business. You can actually really say like, Hey, just so you know, if you are looking for dog walking, go on our website and fill out the client questionnaire. So you can do this too. With this, you can completely automate your dog walking business. So do not text, please while you are running your business because I see it with a lot of dog walking businesses and clients are not taking you as serious when you're texting. So make sure you have your boundaries of like just emailing, of just talking on the phone and communicating through your portal. So make sure please do not text, I please beg you, especially if it's not on your Google voice number, make sure that it's going through your regular, um, especially if it's on your, um, regular phone number, you really don't want that, go through your Google voice number, right? If you have to text, but please try not to text because people are texting back at uh, ungodly hours at like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. and you do want to sleep. So you have to set really boundaries for your business. Use a UPS and USPS mailbox as your business address. So um, you actually have to do that in the US by law anyway. So you have to, um, you have to just in case there's some kind of court case, just in case there's some court kind of um, legal actions taken against you, they actually have to have some kind of address anyway to uh, um, that's open during business hours. So you have to provide that anyway. So you might as well just get the UPS or USPS mailbox, which is pretty cheap. I mean, in the US, you can get a UPS mailbox for like $30 a month and you are not going to be pestered by by clients that want to drop off keys or so um, during, uh, you know, where you live, you really don't want that. So get a, get a UPS or USPS mailbox as your business address. And this way you're separating professional versus personal, which you really want to do. Make use of email scripts. So, and I'm almost done. So make use of email scripts First of all, it provides for consistency. It avoids spelling mistakes. It rules out the chance of forgetting anything in your communication. And most of all, it saves time. So um, they're especially really useful when you're really letting your clients know how everything works. So in the beginning, I always have these email scripts. First of all, when I get a message from a potential client, I have an email script of what I'm writing back, what they should do if they already did that. So if they already created, if, if they already went on the website and filled out a client questionnaire, which I always need in the beginning, then I have another script to uh, let them know how the whole process works. I introduce them more to the company. Um, I give them the rates. I let them know what we do during the visit. So I, I literally give, give them a whole rundown on uh, what's, what's really going on, but every client gets the same email script and you really want that because like, let's say even friends, um, like if, if they're potential clients and their friends and they get two different kind of versions and two different information, then that could really lead to confusion or neighbors or whatever. So you really want email scripts. Also, it's really faster. So you don't have to write out everything again. 
Um, and then also you can let them know, for example, about an impending rate increase. This is really useful too because it saves time because you're going to tell, um, if you tell it to your pet sitting clients, you really don't want to write it all up all over again. And it also provides for consistency, which is really important. And also when you go on vacation. So you can just let all your clients know what's going on and what's coming up. Um, so this is really make use of email scripts. They're really, really important. I believe it's any professional business has email scripts. They have um, email responders that have already as, as a script inside and they're sending this to new clients or existing clients for marketing purposes or whatever. Emotions, leave emotions out of it. The emotions, um, for example, if your client is not adhering to certain rules and they're getting a little bit nasty via email or on the phone, if you feel like you want to say something you really shouldn't say and we never should say anything bad to our clients or our employees, if you can try to sleep on it and even better try to have a break for 24 hours and just think about what you were, what you were, what you really want to say. And if it's really worth going there where you want to go, because a lot of it is really a reflection of, um, when clients are nasty with you, there's really usually no reason to be nasty. Everything can, can, can kind of be talked out and can talk, it can be talked about and figured out, especially as a business, you have the best interest in mind for the client and for your business. So you really want to be nice. Um, so there is usually reason they might be just frustrated um, with their daily routine, with their life or whatever, they're stressed and they kind of take it out on you. A lot of people do that, unfortunately. So don't take it personal. That's actually the 11th point, really. I'm just thinking about, don't ever take things personal, okay? It's really, it's your business, of course. Even in life, you don't have to take anything personal. Usually if people are um, talking to you a certain way or they're saying certain things, that really just means that there's something up with them, unless you're, of course, super rude or whatever, you know? But there's really no reason ever to be nasty with each other. So leave the emotions out of it. It could cost you so much business, especially if you write something via email and they share the screenshot on Facebook, on Instagram or whatever, and it can ruin your business. So make sure you just leave your emotions out of it. It's a business. It's not, it's not, you know, some kind of competition. So um, make sure you cool off if there's anything you want to say that you really shouldn't say. And also if you're not sure what to say, make sleep over it. Go to bed and really ask yourself the question that you want answered and your answer is going to come to you, trust me. So make sure you take a little bit of time and um, you, uh, you let your subconscious work for you and figure a problem out. That's actually really, really how it works. So um, trust yourself there, okay? So that's really it. Um, those are the 10 things, 10 tiny tweaks you can really do to be more professional in your dog walking business. And I hope that helped. I wish you a wonder, wonderful Monday. And I will see you next Monday. Take care, guys. Bye.